Now, what we're going to do today is we are going to watch this video of this little boy who literally went to heaven. Now, many people, they can look at this and say, Caden, anybody can say that they went to heaven. You know, I went to Neverland too. whoop de doo But here's the thing. There's actual proof that this happened and it will blow you away when you hear about it now i'm gonna stop this and talk about it for copyright issues and i just want to watch this together and actually go through this break this down because heaven's a real place contrary to what people may tell you heaven is real hell is real and it's far better to go to heaven what is it really like what are we doing up there let's check this out right now and of course the original video is linked down below you can go watch it there heaven can seem far away but for one little boy, heaven is very real. Colton Burpo was just three years old when he got a sneak peek at what is to come. Take a look. That's a little Evan right there. How old are you today? Me. And what is your name? And where do you live? In Nebraska. Who's your mommy? I'll do this. Sonia. Who's your daddy? So I respect your time. Daddy, Popo. Who's your sister? Cassie. That was eight years ago. Looking at Colton now, you would have never guessed that he almost died in 2003. His father, Todd, tells about Colton's near-death experience in the book, Heaven is for Real. And he started throwing up into the toilet, you know, and uh, at first we're like, okay, he's got the stomach flu because the doctor said it was going around. Colton's condition only got worse as days passed. His doctor discovered his appendix had burst. An infection was spreading in his body. Time was running out. And that that's a true thing. Time is running out. And I want you to watch this with the eyes of realizing you're going to go to this place one day. You're actually going to go to heaven. Now, here's the thing. If you say, Caden, I'm not going to heaven, that's because, A, there's either sin in your life that you haven't dealt with, or B, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, which, hey, that can change by the end of this video. Keep watching. And we knew we were in bad shape when they, they said, well, you need to come out to the hallway. They separated us from everyone else, and then someone came to us and started talking to us that uh, we got to have surgery on your kid. It was tough. Um, senior boy, be lifeless. And then he was a very vibrant child. And it was at that moment that we were looking at each other. I remember my wife holding Colton in that hallway, just us. He's not even moving. We went to the surgery wow. prep area, and I remember them hauling away and him just yelling at me, Daddy, don't let him take me. Daddy, don't let him take me. And I went back to the, uh, uh, the pre-op room where we had left some stuff. And I was finally alone, shut the door. And I just broke down, and I was mad at God. I just frustrated, fed up. Here's the thing, whenever things like that happen in your life, you can never vent your anger towards God. Because you've got to understand this. God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of bad things. The devil in John 10 verse 10, the Bible says the devil is the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. Don't blame God. Don't be mad at God for things that the devil is responsible of. Always vent your frustration towards the devil and know that God is a good God and he only gives you good things. I remember telling him, I said, God, after all I've done for you, and now you're going to take my kid? This is how you treat your pastors? And I was calling our parachain. I was calling anybody that would be on the other line to get Colton on the parachain because it was bad. We were there in the waiting room for an hour and a half, maybe. Then I remember the nurse coming out. Uh, is Colton's daddy out here? Keep watching this. If you have to put it on two times speed, do that. Keep watching this, please. I'm like, yeah, well, Colton's up, uh, uh, in recovery and he's screaming for you. And I'm sitting there with him. And I remember my son in that room then looking up at me and goes, Dad, do you know I almost died? And my first thought was, maybe you overheard the nurse say that, or maybe they thought he was under anesthesia, you know, and, and he wasn't. But it wasn't until four months after we got out of the hospital that we finally listened to our son. And that's where I got to oh. see heaven. No, Jesus and some angels came and flew me up to heaven. And I said, so Colton, what did Jesus look like? I knew that the first person I saw was Jesus. He was wearing white robes with a purple sash. And he just came down nicely and gracefully. Nice well, Dad, Jesus has markers. Dad, Jesus has markers. I didn't know what he meant. So I finally asked the right question. Colton, where are Jesus' markers? And he drops his toys down, and he stands up, and he just points, Dad, they were right here. He takes his fingers, points to the palms, and he bends over and touches the tops of his feet. 
Now that's something that this little kid was saying. Now this little kid, I don't know his in-depth research, but it didn't seem like this kid actually knew that was in the Bible. He's literally saying things that the Bible tells us happen. And this is him seeing Jesus in real life. And it sounds like he didn't even realize that that's something that happened in the Bible. So we can't be making this up. This is true, real life stuff. It looks up to me, that's where Jesus' markers were, Dad. Wow. When I was in the throne room of God to start with, so I got to see what that looked like. I was upset because I didn't know what was happening. What God did is he used people that, people or things that I liked to calm me down. From there on, I felt better. And one day we're traveling together and he looks up at me and, Dad, you used to have a grandpa named Pop, didn't you? Dude, that's crazy. Imagine you never telling your kids something and then your kid goes to heaven and figures it out through Jesus. Imagine you as a parent, you would be like, Honey, did you tell him that? And your wife is like, No, I didn't tell him that. How did he know? Well, obviously, this kid is telling the truth, knowing actual things the dad only knew. Crazy, right? Proof. They're like, yeah, he's really nice. Really? Yeah, you used to play with him as a kid and fix, work with him on the farm and, and shoot stuff with him. And I'm like, yeah, how do you know that? Well, he told me. Uh, a figure you know came that? up and he was Pop. He asked me, are you Todd's son? I said, yes. Wow. He said that he was his grandpa. So that's where I met him. Yeah, Pop, uh, I was very close to him, and he was my most significant male role model when I was a kid growing up. But he was killed in a car wreck before I turned seven. Looks like Brother John. Um, I was busy with. paying bills again, because um, that's um, my job, and he came up and told me he had two sisters. Well, he had to say it several times before he finally got my attention. And finally, I put myself down and looked at him and says, what do you mean you have two si sisters? No, I have two sisters. You had a baby. Died in your tummy. And I Dude! Dude, that's literally crazy. He said, you... I have two sisters and she's like what on earth what are you talking about here's the thing with many people they have miscarriages and things like that happen now if you're watching this because I know I have a, a lot of younger people watching this miscarriages if you don't know what that is that's when a mother loses the baby that they were supposed to have so something can happen and the baby isn't born right and they actually lose the baby it dies in the womb and so it's very tragic, but the thing is a lot of mothers, they can go throughout that and sometimes blank it out of their memory and kind of forget that that happened. So when she heard this, she was like, what are you talking about? It didn't register with her, but the kid knew something his mom had never told her. Crazy, right? I just looked at him like, well, how do you know you have two sisters? Well, Whoa. she told me. And then he proceeded to describe her. She looked like Cassie, but she had brown hair. And first time when she saw me, she just came up and hugged me. Me. We knew this is true because he said she kept hugging me. She wouldn't stop hugging me, Mom, and I didn't like that. Well, I'm not really the hugging type. I had miscarried the weekend of Father's Day weekend, which made it even rougher. And we thought we'd dealt with it. We got never accepted that the baby wow. had died. But when he said he had two sisters, I was, I think I was in shock first and then trying to realize what is he telling me. And so I knew that he had seen her. And after he described her, and he said, she's just, she just waiting for you guys to come. That's the crazy thing too, is that if you're watching this and you had a past where, hey, I did that. Maybe it was an abortion. Maybe it was, you know, a miscarriage or whatever. Don't think that those kids are lost forever, that you're never going to see them again. If you're saved, you're going to go to heaven and those little kids are going to be there waiting to see you. Now, I want to tell you this. If you had an abortion, those kids are not going to be mad at you when you get to heaven. They're going to run up to you saying, mama, mama, or maybe you're a father and you've never seen your kids because your wife had an abortion. Those kids are going to come up to you, daddy, daddy, and they're going to be so thankful to see you as their parents. Here's the crazy thing. Maybe your mom had a miscarriage and you're watching this, you're a brother or sister. You have future siblings in heaven. That's an exciting day to look forward to. To heaven. You know, as we talked about heaven and he was telling me all these wonderful details, I just felt like I had to ask him, did he want to come back? I knew that I was leaving heaven because Jesus came to me and said, Colton, you need to go back. Even though I didn't want to go back, he said that he was answering my dad's prayer. You know, I have heard many people who went to heaven and they came back and they said that they didn't want to come back. 
that they actually liked heaven more than earth. Here's the thing, when you get to heaven, you're going to realize why heaven is so amazing. You know, we talk about it here on the earth, and it can seem like it's out of this world. That's because, hey, it's out of this world. You know, it's in another place. But the thing is, when you get to heaven, you're not going to wish, like, man, I really miss that taco truck down on earth. No, you're going to want to be in heaven. Why? Because there's no pain. Why? Because you feel you feel great in your body. Now, you can feel that here on earth. God supplies. God, God, you know, he heals your body, gives you divine life and things like that. But when we get to heaven, it's going to be far, far greater. That's why Paul said, I w- would go to heaven if it were up to me, but I'm only staying because of your benefit. I remember that prayer. That irreverent, that disrespectful, screaming at God prayer. <laughs> I was like, he's answering that prayer? Today, Colton is a healthy 11-year-old and shares his heavenly journey with boldness. I learned that heaven is for real, and you're going to like it. Coming straight from that little kid. And you can tell he's telling the truth. You can't look at him and say, nah, I think he's fibbing a little bit. No, he doesn't look like the type to just make up a little lie for, for cracking jokes and fun's sake. He's telling you the truth right now. I learned that heaven is real and you're going to like it. Why are you going to like it? Because you're going to be with a loving God. And we, we, we sometimes miss that. All right. Now let's talk about this. Are you sure you're going to heaven? Now here's the thing. Can you look at me flat-footed in my eyes? Don't be looking off right now. If you're scrolling trying to find another video, you put your thumb to a pause and you look at me in the eyes. I'm going to ask you a genuinely deep question Nobody's probably asked you this before. Get ready. I'm going to ask you. Are you 100% certain that if you died right now, that you would go to heaven? Or I mean, like without a shadow of a doubt, your life was taken right now. You say, how would that happen? You know, crazy things in this world happen. Say somebody planted a bomb and you don't have time to drop to your knees And ask God to be your Lord and Savior. Ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. You don't have time to do that. There was a bomb that went off. Maybe somebody has a sniper gun. You know, it's just crazy things like that. You can laugh at it and and whatever. But the reality is, this is a real world that we live in. And there's things that happen every day. Now, God will protect you. God will keep you safe from those things happening. But it's never okay to risk life not knowing where your salvation is. Where you're going when you die. Because trust me, when you die, just like that little boy died, you know, he had the privilege of coming back. You might not have the privilege of coming back. And I would hate for you go t- to go to the place this little boy didn't go to. That's a place called hell. While heaven is an amazing place like we saw here, and while it is a place of God's glory and great strength and no pain and all that stuff, hell is the complete opposite. Every amount of torture you can think of, that's in hell. Demons, worms, the Bible says, the lake of fire. It's a place of extreme pain and torture. And if you go there, you're going to live your whole eternity regretting the day You didn't give your life to Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to give your life to Jesus Christ and know where you're going if you were to die. Just simply close your eyes right now. Bow your head. And I want you, I'm serious, close your eyes. Bow your head. Sometimes you got to say that twice. Don't be looking around. Don't be scrolling on your phone. Bow your head. Close your eyes. Repeat this after me. And I need you to say this from the bottom of your heart to God. Repeat this after me. Say, God... I believe you sent Jesus to die for me. I confess he is Lord and Savior of my life. I repent of all my sins. I confess Jesus is Lord. And I am born again a Christian. I turn my back on this world, on sin, on the devil, and I will serve Jesus for the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, say amen, and would you do me a big favor? If you just said that prayer, type down in the comments, I just said that prayer, 
That's all it has to be. I just said that prayer. And then underneath that, you can put any testimony that the Lord did in your life while you said that prayer. I want to respect your time. I'll let you go ahead and go. But I will tell you this. I upload videos like this all the time. It would be a great blessing to me if you would hit that subscribe button, that like button, that post notifications on so that we can help this word get spread out to more and more people. And I want you to stay up to date with all the latest content that I'm coming out with. I love you guys so much. Your best days are ahead of you and Jesus loves you so much. If I don't see you here on this earth, I'm going to see you one day in heaven because you meant business with God and you prayed that prayer of salvation. Keep it up and I'll see you in heaven one day. Love you so much. Bye-bye.